Hey everybody, this is Kodak here, and I know this video is uh, a little bit late coming out. I've been up to all sorts of crazy things, but uh, for those of you who know, last Saturday, June 24th, 2023, was Free RPG Day. Now, I have gone over uh, free... I think I've gone over Free RPG Day before. I know I've gone over Free Comic Book Day, which is a day where um, companies send a bunch of stuff out to stores to get people to come in and buy stuff. Um, Free RPG Day is the tabletop role-playing game version of that. And this time I got a lot of good stuff. Now, usually stores limit how much they want you to take and you're supposed to buy something and, you know, I, of course, did that. I bought what I could when I went to the stores, but I went to several stores, so I, I kind of stretched out what I got between all of those stores. Um, I did leave behind, like, there's some, like, some premium goods sent to these stores, like, m free miniatures and, like, dice bags and stuff. The only thing I regret missing out on was the collapsible dice tray, because I don't have one of those. Um, I mean, I have a folding dice tower, but it's, it's not quite the same as something you can just slip next to a book. But, um, anyway, here is what I was able to grab from all of my stops, and we actually got some really interesting stuff to look at here, and I figured I would give my critique on each one. Um, although, first of all, this one kind of stands out, doesn't it? Because uh, Saturday, June 24th was also the day that Warhammer had its 10th edition release. It was Leviathan Day for Warhammer, so one of the things you did, and can still do up until July 15th, is go to the store and pick up a free miniature of choice. In this case, it is a Termagant which is a creature of the, the Xenos race, the Tyranid, which are similar to Xenomorphs, pretty much. Uh, this is actually a, a, a unique sculpt expressly for the mini of the month. You can kind of see the tail, the little wiggly tail, like, reaching out here. This is new. It used to be, like, just kind of a straight line. At least, from what I can remember, this is a new thing. Yeah, I didn't actually wind up buying the Leviathan box. I mulled it over for a bit, and I realized that there was only, like, one or two things I wanted out of the box, and somebody at the store was willing to sell me one of those things for, like, ten bucks. It's the, it's the Space Marine Terminator Librarian. I have a, a band of Terminators, and now I have a, a cool model that I can have, uh, I can have to lead my Terminators into battle, although that's kind of hilarious. I have a Terminator and a Termagant. Got them, uh, on the same day, and I was able to get two of these guys, because there's at least two Warhammers near me. I'm gonna try to see just how many I can find near me, just to take full advantage of this little system here. Anyway, moving on, let's take a look at some of the other stuff we got. I got this Onslaught pack, and this was like little packets of cards. I think a lot of people took them without thinking. But what these are is these are artificial intelligence cards for the player characters. I don't know if they can be used to like play the game one player, but they're designed to be used for a little like campaign where you take just the contents of the starter box and what it does oh it's actually two oh yeah it's this one oh is this a different one oh no this is the same one okay so the idea is that you actually play as the monsters against the player character so it's a four player game um so all of you uh, e each player basically picks a monster that they play as and they all play as each other and these control the artificial intelligence of the actual player characters i don't know if these can be used to like set you up with a one player game but re remember my video about onslaught this this is the kind of creativity that i like to see it's the kind of thing that i want to see um it's it's that it's that whiz kids organized play stuff that I'm talking about. These kinds of creative adventures are what always define their organized play to me, and they're finally coming out with the sorts of things I expect. I hope we see more of these. I scanned this and the cards in, so if you want to run this campaign yourself, you can do it. If you miss the freebie here, I mean these were free. I don't think I'm crossing any lines by making it free for everybody because this was already given away for free, but that was an interesting thing. Um, as for this, this thing is actually really cool. Um, it's called Adventure Party, and what this is, is it is a brilliant game that is basically an exercise in active roleplay and in improvisational roleplay, stuff like that. The idea is it's sort of a reverse thing that's designed to, like, help bolster creativity, rather than the Dungeon Master getting a Dungeon Master screen. Instead, um, each player actually gets sort of their own Dungeon Master screen. That's what these are. These are actually like fold-out screens that, you know, have the druid, and then they tell you like, 
the... Let's just go ahead and pull one out of here, so... So, see, it's like a little Dungeon Master screen. And what happens is you pull this out, and it gives you, like, a list of cool stuff that the character can do, and we have here the rules of the game. What happens is there's these big cards in here, and they contain a list of uh, difficult challenges that face the player. So the Dungeon Masters, uh, or the GM, that's right, they're called the GM for a very specific reason. What the GM does is they read the challenge on the card, and the players roll 20-sided dice behind their little player screens and keep it a secret. Then what they have to do is, based on their roll, which does have some rough, rough thresholds. Basically, it's like rating it from one to 20. Uh, a one is like an abject failure, and a 20 is a stunning success, where you have like the nine. Nine is barely failure, 10 is barely winning. So there is a clear threshold here for what is a failure and what is a success. And what you're supposed to do is describe what happens with what your character does to try to defeat the bad guy using the skills listed on their character and the magic item cards that they draw at the start of the game. So they have to combine these things together and say, oh, my character is going to use their power with animals and their amulet of blasting. They're going to have a squirrel get really close and have it explode right in the dragon's face or something like that. And the GM, or Guess Master, has to figure out what they rolled. And the closer their guess, to what the players roll, the more points that player gets, to a maximum of five. So basically, if if they get really, if, if so the players are incentivized to be good in their descriptions, to give like a good, like decent amount to explain what it does. I mean, it does kind of slant the ones and the twenties um, a bit because it's very easy to describe something awesome, like, you know, suddenly like pulling a guitar out of nowhere and, you know, power sliding across the ground on your knees as electricity flies out of your butt or something like that. You know, that's like a natural 20 or something like that. Um, but this, I think, is a great way to sort of introduce people to the concept of the improvisational and descriptive aspects of role playing games. Um, my brother in law has like a drunk version of this that he does with people where he just has them roll a dice and explains what happens when they do it. Um, this is like that in, in solid form. I think this is, I think this is a really, has a lot of potential. This is a demo version of it, but there's going to be a full version of it coming out at some point. It is, who is it by? I'm actually not sure who this is by, but I imagine you could look up Adventure Party. This is supposed to be like a special demo. You'd think they'd have, uh, an indication of who made it on here. Oh, here we go. Kurt Covert, smirkanddagger.com. So I guess there's the place to look up for that. Like I said, this looks this looks tons of fun for like a quick little a little party party session if you want to introduce people to how a role-playing game like like Dungeons and Dragons or Pathfinder actually carries out. Um, up next we have Critical Foundation, and uh, I don't know if you've seen it, but I made a video about something called SCGs or subscription card games. The idea is that you can sign up for like a mail-in subscription for cards, but it would have to be a game like the Lord of the Rings card game or Arkham Horror or like, you know, like a card game version of like Hunt a Killer and all of those, you know, sorts of subscription mystery boxes, but like with cards, so it can be like randomized, the encounters can change every time. This kind of seems like this. What this is, is it is, um, well, it's episode zero of a kit where um, it essentially gives you like a mission, an episode. They call them episodes. So season one is like nine episodes of 30 minutes each. I think it's sold as a solid box on its own. Uh, it's actually by Hatchet. Uh, Hatchet are the people who do War uh, Warhammer Imperium. I actually did a, a video about that too. So that, oh, they already do like subscription things. So I imagine if they do like season two as like an episodic series. I know Hatchet Parks, Part Works does a number of these kinds of subscriptions. I would totally love to see this. I think this is done individually. It's like a spy thriller sort of thing, like a James Bond or a Deus Ex kind of like spy thriller where each player gets a spy to play as and the Dungeon Master reads them the challenges and they play through the episodes, which I assume are contained in these little DVD sized boxes. But yeah, this is exactly the kind of thing I'm talking about when I'm saying like a, a, a subscription adventure game where players like they get more episodes as time goes on and they get more stuff to do and this this just strikes me as like a really a really awesome idea um speaking of awesome ideas we also have 
Loop Garo. And what this is, is this is actually not a role-playing game. What this is, is it is a choose-your-own-adventure comic book. So you're given the pretense and the setup for what is going to happen, but then you uh, actually like start playing the Choose Your Own Adventure, and I actually have it bookmarked here so we can have like a spoiler-free page. Um, this is like the demo, like the first chapter, but it's really well presented because it's like a frantic chase scene, and what you're doing is you're flipping to the sections on here, and you're frantically looking for the page numbers on here. Like, see, there's a, a page number right there that says 173, or like, um, hidden in the snow here, we have like 91, so you have to go there and you like flip to the page, like 100, 170, 173 brings it back here, so we see like some signs here, which takes me like to 37, so we keep flipping and going. Um, this was a really fascinating introduction. I do like this idea a lot. Um, Loop Garo by Graphic Novel Adventures. This seems like a totally fun thing to do. Um, it's a little bit like, uh, there were like games that like, like, where you actually like write down like your stats and your scores and stuff like that. I can't remember what they were called, but there was like, like a number of famous ones where you actually have to like keep track of your stamina and stuff and you know, things can damage you or you have to fight things. This is literally that, but as a comic book, a really, really neat idea. So we've already taken a look at these. Oh wow. Are we already, uh, are we already down to the books? All right. So we have... Vampire the Masquerade, A Taste of Moon. This is a pre-generated adventure for the World of Darkness, I assume, 5th edition. I already had like a little Twitter tirade where I tore into this book a little bit. Hey, free RPG day companies, I mean, I, I appreciate that you're making these, but for the love of Pete, this has happened multiple times in a row. I beg of you to stop making the exact same mistake you always do, because what happens is you look at here, but when we get to the characters, you see we have Malika Red, but here's her biography, but here's her character. And on the back of Malika Red's character sheet is the biography of a different character. Why couldn't it have been that these characters had their biographies on the back sheet so I could just tear these out of the book and hand them to my players? Uh, but it is a Vampire the Masquerade um, one shot. It is played by Anarchs, which would be like the, the Sabbat, the anarchic vampires who believe that vampires should be free and not stick to the rules set by the masquerade. The whole idea is like, like there's monsters and vampires and they're all real, but they're concealed by this thing called the masquerade. And if you try to break the masquerade, you'll get eliminated. But it's a one shot about an addictive drug that's only for vampires. And um, you play as like a small gaggle of, like I said, anarch sabat to try to solve it. Um, speaking of that Twitter tirade, Heist at the Museum is one that I actually gave some praise to because they formatted things correctly. We have a mat here. Uh, they actually did one of these last year as well, um, but they actually had like an extra uh, paper wrap around because it had like a larger mat. I'm glad they figured out a way to kind of streamline and simplify it so they can just send out the printing here. And like I said, you can just tear out and uh, like it's got like physical props to hand to the players. It's got like miniatures to cut up and I like this like I like how they have like the physical props like you can just hand these to the players and they're supposed to do things like the center of the book is all supposed to be torn out and handed out this is how you build a one shot right here is you make it so that everything can just be run smoothly you just grab the book and go for it because uh, with a lot of these others you have to like find multiple copies of the book so that everybody has a copy so they can keep track of their character um, I guess maybe they don't want people to destroy these books, but come on, that's that's kind of the fun of, of a one-shot, is, you know, it's a one and done. Once you play it, you know, why would you play it again? So this is Operation Seaside Park for Starfinder, which is uh, basically, um, it's the Warhammer 40k to Pathfinder's Age of Sigmar. It's a futuristic um, Dungeons & Dragons style game that's set in Warhammer 40k. And speaking of, like, Warhammer 40,000, this is basically a Tyranid High Fleet crash lands at an amusement park. Um, or at least they call them the Swarm here, but they're basically the Tyranids. Uh, and you have to, like, find the nest and blow it up before anything bad can happen. Um, and speaking of, we have Pathfinder A Few Flowers More. This is actually a sequel to A Fistful of Flowers, which was the adventure, uh, the Free RPG Day adventure from last year. So it's it's going to be interesting to see how they, they finish it out, because uh, the final um, name of the, the final movie in the Dollars trilogy... A Fistful of Dollars and A Few Dollars More is the classic The Good, The Bad, and The Ugly. So I wonder how they're going to handle that name. I actually kind of look forward to it. Um, this one is a story about 
how like like the like some fairies are invading a forest and fairies can be kind of nasty just take a look at like the world of darkness fairies and you're like a bunch of plant characters it's the same plant characters you played from the previous adventure but a level higher so you can actually you know you can take the familiar characters and play them again so i think that would be kind of fun to run as like a pair of back-to-back -back adventures um although speaking of adventures here's kind of a big one avatar legends the role-playing game and eh I don't know if I'm really a fan of the system. I mean, I think they're trying to make it simple by only using 2d6. And yeah, if you're there and wondering what these dice were, these are these are Moon Spirit dice for the for the Avatar game. Let's see if I can get the camera to recognize it. Yeah, see, it's the it's the Moon Spirits from uh, Avatar: The Last Airbender. So this is, uh, I think they they were trying to make it seem simple by having it so that every check requires you to only roll 2d6 die, but. I don't know. The 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 storyline system seems a bit free form for what I'm going for and while they're trying to make it simple, it is very complex. Like there is a whole spectrum of like emotional damage and emotional, emotional fighting that this game damage. has. It's a game it's a game about crying. It's a game that is very much about about crying. It's it's like the full like rules like everything but character creation and setup, but uh, if you want to give it a try, it was pretty large. Um, I'll, speaking of confusion, here's one that I think is a bit too, a bit too linear, a bit too grippy. Um, this is the G.I. Joe and Transformers role-playing game. I know that seems like an odd combination unless you're a fan of these series because G.I. Joe and Transformers have been in the same universe from the beginning. It is canon that the two stories happen together. Um, so, of course, there is uh, to Cobra Confusion is the title. Um, but everything here is like everything in these stories. It's more than meets the eye. It's a very, it's an interesting thing about deception and things like that. There's like a frantic, like medical, like hospital sequence. And then there's a chase sequence. And then there's a dungeon crawl. And that sounds cool, but all of it is designed with like a very specific, like linear process. Like you're expected to do a ton of things in order to make things happen. Very railroady. I'm not sure how players are supposed to figure out how all of this works without the dungeon master just kind of expressly telling them what to do. So this one seems like a bit too strict while Avatar seems a bit too loosey-goosey. Uh, so I've never actually taken a look at the, at the uh, at either of these. I think it also, I think they advertise in the back. There's also like a ponies one uh, back, back when it was big. I don't know if it's that popular anymore and Power Rangers as well. I don't know. Maybe I'll give these a try. Like I said, I'm looking, I'm looking to see, uh, to see what, sorts of interesting adventures await once uh, I'm done with the current campaign. And finally, we have a one-page adventure by Dragon Shield. You might know Dragon Shield more for they make uh, card sleeves, and they did include a card here that features like a monster on a single card, like everything but their legendary actions. And we have a one-page dungeon. And the idea is that it's a one-page dungeon where people have to try to get through four doors with like appropriate checks and things like that. And depending on, you know, each door requires the same process to open, but there'll be like little twists and turns here that require it here. A bit short, seems like it might be a fun one shot, but who knows? Anyway, that is a look at Free RPG Day. I did uh, try to buy as much as I can. If you ever go to Free RPG Day, be sure to do the same. Like I said, these things aren't necessarily provided out of the goodness of their hearts. I think the things that excite me the most were these uh, graphic novel adventures and Adventure Party, which seems like a fantastic concept and a great way to exercise your creativity with you and your group. Anyway, I will be back with more stuff in due time. And until next time, this is Kodak signing off.